Hi, welcome back. You're watching MF Corner. Now, there is a growing and a very real fear that people may outlive their savings. One reason could be that, you know, you're just not saving enough. Well, that can be easily worked out and set right pretty early on. The other problem is of overusing your retirement kitty because, you know, you finally have the time and money to do pretty much what you want. But there is a scientific way to judge a safe withdrawal rate which does not depress your post-retirement kitty. Mohit Gang, co-founder and CEO of Moneyfront, joins in uh, to explain this math. Hi, Mohit. Good to see you in. So tell us, what is the safe and sustainable withdrawal rate uh, post-retirement? Hi, Samaira. Good afternoon. Uh, so look, I think a safe withdrawal rate is a rate or a percentage factor which each and every person can withdraw from the retirement corpus which they have accumulated throughout their uh, retired life or throughout their lifespan. Uh, now, the, now, there are many variables to this entire uh, equation. It sounds very simple. Uh, but the whole thing is there are many variables which you cannot predict. Hmm. And the first and the foremost variable out there is how long will you live? Right. So post retirement, you you first have to put an estimation to your lifespan, which is the toughest part. Second, you have to estimate what will be the inflation then, which is like 25. If let's say there are 20 years uh, down more for your retirement. And after that, if you will live for another 25 years, you have to virtually estimate an inflation figure for next 40, 45 odd years, which is mm-hmm. which is absolutely tough. Right. And then there are variables which you can't control which is like, uh, when will you retire? What is the age at which you will cut off from your corporate life or from your work life? And second is what kind of an investment mix will you choose? So these are few variables which you can control, but the ones which you cannot are the real deciders in this game of what is to be a right withdrawal rate of your corpus. Okay. So Mohit, how, 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 how does this figure arrive at? The way I understand it is that uh, globally there is an accepted withdrawal rate from the retirement kitty. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, look, there are many ways uh, first to compute the kitty, which is then you can have an actual uh, uh, a replacement ratio method, which which says that you can have at least 68 to 90 percent of your current income or current monthly expenses as your retirement expenses. Uh, just a very rough figure, but that's scientifically arrived uh, range. Uh, or the second could be an actual expenses method, which says that uh, you put your expenses list it down, see what expenses will go off after retirement, add new expenses like medical expenses or some other expenses, travel expenses, et cetera, and see what your, what your actual expenses will be. Now, basis that your retirement kitty comes in and then comes in a rule, uh, the genesis of which was found out in 1994 by a famous paper, which was wrote by a financial advisor called William Benjin. Uh, so he gave a 4% rate, uh, a 4% rule. And the rule is also called Trinity rule, which says that 4% is an acceptable standard rate of withdrawal uh, from your accumulated corpus. If you assume that your retirement age will be around 25 to 27 years. And if you also assume that the rate of growth in this corpus will kind of negate the rate of inflation, which means that your corpus will keep growing at around 5 to 7% uh, annual rate and inflation will also be in that same band. So if you assume these things, then 4% rate of withdrawal could actually last you for your retirement age, which could be around 25 to 27 years. So that's also called a Trinity rule actually. Okay. Um, Mohit, just explain this 4%. I know uh, you've done this math, uh, but give us a real life example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So look, let's take a very simplistic example. Let's say if your monthly expenses are rupees 33,000, which means around 4 lakh rupees a year, uh, right? Uh, Approximately uh, 4 lakh rupees a year. Uh, Now that means to have 4 lakh rupees a year, uh, and 33,000 rupees monthly expense, you will need a corpus of 1 crore to sustain for your retirement, uh, a post-retirement age. And post-retirement, I am counting a year span of around 25 to 27 years out here, approximately in that band. So if you have 1 crore corpus, 4% of that is 4 lakhs. Monthly withdrawal rate can be 33,000 rupees a year. So that will sustain you uh, nicely. And you have just have to choose the right investment mix for this one crore corpus. And that investment mix has to be absolutely safe, which, which just about matches the inflation rate, right? So if the inflation rate is, let's say, 7%, you have to choose an investment mix, which could be fixed deposits, which could be whatever common securities or some safer instruments, which gives you around 7% return. But this one crore corpus, assuming a 4% rate, will keep giving you 33,000 rupees per month for next 25 to 27 years. Now, things which can go wrong here, Sumaira, is 
that uh, people tend to overdraw at times, right? So you can't like start with a higher rate of withdrawal and then try and do post corrections. You should start with a smaller amount first, hmm. keep the rate at around three and a half percent to around 3.75 percent and then gradually increase looking at the rate of inflation which is going on at that time right so if let's say inflation is going higher than what your portfolio can fetch uh basically i'll, I'll just give you today's scenario today the real rate of return is negative yeah. inflation is actually at around five and a half percent but fds are not giving you beyond five percent uh today a one-year mm. fd right so you you actually are not making as much as inflation so then you have to reduce your withdrawal rate Mark it down little, start with a slower amount of 3.5% to 3.75% and gradually inch it up towards 4% and see if the corpus keeps sustaining for you. But a 4% rate will sustain you uh, very well. And if you take this example, so it could be anything. So let's say if your if your uh, requirement is 8 lakhs a year, you keep the corpus at 2 crores and it will sustain you. If your requirement is 12 lakhs, you keep a corpus of 3 crores for your retirement, it will sustain you with a 4% rate. Uh, yeah. The rate factor, you will actually have to work with your financial advisor to come at a perfect rate factor, but 4% globally is a standard uh, uh, acceptable rate. Understood, understood. Uh, you know, I, I can totally understand that because, uh, you know, you'd look at one crore and somebody would say that, you know, why do I uh, spend only 33,000 a year? But that's the way uh, to keep it sustainable. By the way, there was also a further study done of this principle and it was found that over two thirds of the time, Retirees finish the 30-year time horizon still having more than double of their starting principal. So the median wealth at the uh, you know end of uh, the top of the 4% rule and adjusted for inflation was almost 2.8 times uh, the starting capital. Uh, but Mohit, what about early retirees? Say those who are looking to retire in their 30s or 40s, uh, will 4% hold good for them also? So I wish I could be in that bracket. Uh... Me too. <laughs> Okay. Uh, look, I think 4% typically holds good. Uh, only thing is, uh, I've, we've taken a 25 year span out here of, of, of the corpus, right? You, you, if you increase the corpus span to, let's say, uh, I'm just taking an example, a quick example. Let's say if someone, uh, retires at age 40 and the, uh, lifespan then assumed is 50 years of retirement. Let's assume he'll live up to 90 years of age. Then I think instead of 4%, a thumb of rule will say that you reduce the corpus down to two and a half to 2%, basically a withdrawal rate of two, two and a half percent will then last you for 50 years, uh, per se. So you will have to adjust that. Anytime you extend the retirement age from 25 years or 27 years and beyond, you will have to keep decreasing the withdrawal rate uh, to sustain uh, to sustain the same corpus, basically. Or other thing is have such a large corpus that you don't have to worry about the withdrawal rate. That's other way of looking at it. Okay, uh, Mohit, you had said earlier on that the first year after retirement matters the most, right? Is it only to keep the corpus in check? No, actually, I think that's kind of a testing uh, time. So once you retire, the first one or two years, you'll have to actually test whether the withdrawal rate is working well and the inflation assumptions and the assumptions of your portfolio returns and the portfolio mix is working well for you, right? And it can't be just one year. It has to be like a three-year window. So you start small. Let's say you withdraw 3%. Then you see what the actual inflation rate has been, what has been the increase in your own household expenses, your own medical okay. expenses, not just go by the published RBI figures or some published numbers. Uh, basically, see what has been the actual rate for you and your own expenses. Adjust that in your equations. See what your investment mix has actually delivered for you, right? It, you can assume that my investment uh, or the corpus which I've accumulated will give me 5% or 7%, but perhaps it would have ended you given, uh, have given you only 4.5% or, hmm. or much lesser than that, right? Yeah. So you will have to adjust all those things. It will take you first three years to adjust the equation as per the actual rates which are going on in the economy, as per the actual inflation which is going on, sometimes your medical expenses can just shoot up, right? Yeah. So your yeah. real life scenarios can change things uh, much faster than what you anticipate. So you'll have to provision for all that and then tweak your withdrawal rate. Now, withdrawal rate is not like a pegged figure that Understood. if you yeah. say 4%, it becomes 4% yeah. for perpetuity. You have to keep tweaking it min uh, minutely every year and uh, start with 3%, inch it up gradually, it's okay to have some more corpus towards the fag end than to not have anything at the end yeah. of it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I think that can really lend you in suit. No, Amoid, you've raised a very good point also, which is that, uh, you know, the prevailing rate of inflation is not the inflation for people like you and me. I mean, 
you're of course yeah. an H and I, but for people like me, <laughs> so it's actually <laughs> anywhere between twelve to fourteen percent. Uh, you know, so you've got to keep that uh, in account. But Moi, thanks very much for joining in. So, guys, I hope this was useful. If your first few years of retirement go smoothly, you likely end up with a lot of money left over. So, be conservative at the beginning. If you make big expenditures in the first few years, it will deplete a big chunk of the portfolio early on, which may land you in a tough spot. I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned for closing bell.